Okay, so uh, I'm very excited to, to uh, be here and um, introduce four fantastic vegetation ecologists. The first one is uh, Rochelle Boole, who's the program lead and senior vegetation ecologist for the vegetation classification and mapping program with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. The name of her talk is Nearing the Finish Line, a path forward to completing a statewide vegetation classification and fine scale map. Hi everyone. Thank you, Teresa. This is really exciting to have a whole vegetation session. Let's see. Is this it? Wow. Okay, well, we'll figure this out. Okay, so as Teresa mentioned, I'm a vegetation ecologist with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's Vegetation Classification and Mapping Program. Um, you might know us as VegCamp. Um, it really is a very exciting time in the world of vegetation ecology right now, and I'm going to tell you why that is. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, it worked. Good. So I'm going to tell you um, a bit about VegCamp, what we do and um, who we are. I'm going to give you an overview of our process. I'm going to tell you what vegetation data is already out there and where to find it um, and why following a state standard is so important. And then I'll tell you some about um, our past and a little bit more about what, where we currently are and our future of vegetation data. Oh, I went the wrong way. There we go. So VegCamp's purpose is to um, support the survey of California vegetation, otherwise known as SCV. And we do this through developing and maintaining um, the statewide vegetation classification system in collaboration with the CMPS vegetation program. We also set best practices and standards for vegetation sampling protocols, vegetation data analysis for developing the state's vegetation classification, and standards for vegetation mapping. And through this process, we also provide rarity ranks um, for um, vegetation or natural communities and also identify sensitive natural communities. And uh, our ultimate goal is to um, complete a fine scale statewide vegetation classification and vegetation map. <clears throat> so stepping back, um, I would like to just describe what, what I mean by vegetation. Um, it's simply it's what is covering the natural and semi-natural landscape. So vegetation communities are groups of plant species that co-occur in repeating and consistent patterns in specific environmental settings. So for a typical vegetation classification and mapping project, <clears throat> um, field data is collected in all potential vegetation community types, <clears throat> excuse me, um, using our standard sampling protocols. Um, and then we analyze these data, which allow us to use um, us to give the community types names and definitions. And this is how we build our statewide vegetation classification. And once we have clear definitions for the vegetation communities, oh nice, um, a vegetation map can be made where the mapper, mappers will correlate what is seen on the ground um, to what is seen on the imagery or other digital um, surface cover data sets. So more simply, um, the process is to collect data, analyze the data to develop an, the definitions for community types um, and those vegetation units, and then use those um, um, to, for mapping. Um, and as you can see, you have to move through the process in this, in this way. You certainly can't um, analyze data without collecting data, and you cannot map without um, defining your mapping units first. The statewide vegetation classification follows the national vegetation classification system. It is quantitative, meaning it's based on all that field data we've collected, and is also hierarchical, meaning it, is, it can be viewed and used at multiple nesting levels, um, depending on your goals. Um, the statewide vegetation classification is, is offered to the public through the Manual of California Vegetation Online. Um, it's updated regularly, at least once, um, one to two times a year. It's hosted by CMPS online. 
As I mentioned, the classification can then be applied to fine scale vegetation maps. Um, in these data rich digital spatial layers, polygons delineate stands of defined vegetation community types and are attributed as such. Additionally, our our state mapping standards require that each polygon it also includes other attributes to um, quantify the vegetation structure, such as strata, tree, shrub, and herb covers, um, uh, the height of the dominant vegetation type, and tree DBH, and such. Um, also, disturbances such as rotedness and degree of um, development present are, are part of our standards to include. These spine scale maps are used for a wide range of land management and conservation planning. At the simplest, these maps can be used to display and query the landscape based on the attributes in the map, such as identifying the location of sensitive natural communities, um, identifying where there might be high disturbances from exotics, rotedness, or development um, for um, restoration, for example, or identify where the densest tree canopies are or where there might be just a few trees present which could help for identifying wildlife habitat and so many other way, uh, other things. But these maps can also be used in conjunction with other data sets to derive information important for determining things like wildfire risk assessments and climate change and sea level rise planning, identifying um, illegal cannabis growth and um, wildlife habitat and wildlife corridors and so many other things. So they're really powerful data sets. <clears throat> All of our vegetation data is accessible online as it is completed. The, um, I already mentioned the manual California vegetation. This houses our statewide vegetation classification. The biogeographic information and observation system or BIOS houses all the vegetation maps and field survey data and the VegCamp website houses our standards and project reports and all sorts of other vegetation related um, resources. Um, and what you might ask is the value of having a state standard. Um, I know some folks are really comfortable with what they already know and for that reason might still be um, utilizing older vegetation classification systems such as Holland and other community and other types um, um, these were great in their time because it really gave us a place to start off, um, to start us off, but I just want to drive home for you all that um, we know so much more than we did. Um, we have so much more data collection and analyses under our belts, and this provides us with a much more robust and refined and defensible vegetation um, classification. And since we have great definitions now for these things or we're working our way towards it, we can all consistently apply the concepts across the state and even nationally when mapping, modeling, or performing on the ground management. Um, and we're also collecting data um, in all community types and defining all community types and not just sensitive natural communities, which can give, give us a better idea of which, which community types are in fact sensitive and we can also more easily determine when we encounter new community types that don't have a fit existing definition. So it's really important that we all utilize the survey of California state standards and so um, and get, get everybody up to speed on that. Um, a little history, um, fine scale vegetation classification and mapping utilizing the survey of California vegetation standards has been of a bit, I'd say of a slow but exponential process and as you know, our state is one of the most ecologically diverse as well as one of the largest at um, about 100 million acres total. So it's been a big job. The first uh, mapping project following the state standards as they are now um, was in Anzabrigo State Park here, accounting for less than 1% of the state. But you know, you've got to start somewhere. Um, 10 years later, we doubled that mapping um, for the state. And then just 10 years later, by 2018, we had complete sampling, classification, and mapping for over 46% of the state. So at this point, you know, we were 20 years into our efforts, but I think making really great progress. Um, and then from 2018 to 2022, we added nearly 10 more million acres of new mapping projects for the state, and this surpassed that, you know, 50% complete milestone for us, which was great. 
Um, but then in 2021, um, VegCamp received the first of three large legislative funding allocations, and then again in 2022, and then again this year in 2023, we received um, large sums of money. Each funding allocation has a three-year spending timeline. Um, in total, we've received an amazing $45.5 million to support fine-scale vegetation data development for the state, which is by far more than we ever imagined receiving in such a short amount of time. And it's, uh, it's a lot of work. And as I mentioned it, at the beginning, it, but it's very exciting. And um, uh, we are doing really great things with this amazing opportunity. So you ready to see what we're doing with all this money? All right, here are all of our projects. Okay, so there's a lot. There's no part of the state that isn't being touched right now um, that are, doesn't already have existing data. Um, I'd like to briefly highlight each of these projects. Just bear with me. It does take a lot of people, a lot of time, and a lot of effort, so I wanna highlight all, all the people involved. Keep in mind, we're always looking for collaboration opportunity as well as land access opportunities. So, you know, keep, if you have resources or um, want to collaborate, just come come get me. Um, we have two types of projects really right now, sampling projects and mapping projects. As you recall, sampling and classification are that first step. Um, so where we have field survey gaps, we needed to do sampling projects and where we have existing data, we're able to jump right into those mapping, that final mapping phase. Um, and in some instances, we have sampling and mapping happening under the same project. So I'm gonna start in the north. Oops, I went the wrong way again. There we go. So along with uh, huge support from state parks and CAL FIRE, we have the sampling and mapping project in the Northern California Coast and Coast Ranges. This project is being co completed in collaboration with Tuckman Geospatial Aerial Information Systems and the California Native Plant Society. Um, this project is adding over 1 million acres of mapping and over 2,500 new surveys for the state. And Betsy with VegCamp is gonna elaborate a bit on some of the work that we've been doing there. Um, and then also really exciting, um, we have a new request for proposal out for people, for somebody to pick up and um, complete the mapping of um, 1.7 million acres of the North Coast Zone there, um, and those are due February 9th, so please consider, if you have expertise to do so, um, submitting a proposal for that work. Um, the Geographic Information Center, GIC, um, from right here in Chico, um, are working to complete the mapping in the Modoc Plateau up there in the Northeast. Um, Betsy will also be talking a little bit more about this project. Um, GIC will also be completing the sampling for the Southern Sierra Nevada Mono Great Basin, as well as adding some additional sampling for the North Coast Ranges. They will be collecting over 1,600 new surveys and over 2.2 million acres of mapping for the state. I, I did it again. I'm really, okay. It's a big green button. Okay, the Southern Cascades Vegetation Sampling Project is being led by Volmar Natural Lands Consulting um, along with Siskiyou Biosurvey. They will be adding 1,600 field surveys there in that large region. And then the Klamath Mountains um, ecoregion, um, the there's a sampling project there that is being completed in collaboration with CMPS, um, Cal Poly Humboldt, and Bigfoot Trails Consulting. They will be adding 2,000 new field surveys in the super diverse area of the state. The East Bay Regional Park District is heading up a complete vegetation sampling and mapping project for Alameda and Contra Costa counties, covering over um, just over 1 million acres, um, and will also include 600 new surveys for the state. It's a multi-agency effort, including CAL FIRE and so many others, and, We've just we've been able to contribute some resources to help support the sampling and classification analysis there that's being led by CMPS. Um, and the UC Santa Cruz Arboretum is covering the sampling for several regions, including the Northern Sierra Nevadas, Na Napa County, Northern Intercoast Range, um, and 
which will be feeding into a broader sampling and mapping effort um, that is happening in that area. They will be adding nearly 2,000 new surveys for this date, and Alex will be talking about some of the work there that they've been doing. We're, uh, we are excited to be working with the San uh, Coastal San Luis Obispo and the Monterey County Resource Conservation Districts to complete that sampling of the Central Coast and Coast Ranges ecoregion and that broader um, project that I was talking about that's outside of the UC Santa Cruz area. Um, the team that, the UC Santa Cruz team will be sampling the, the outside, the areas outside of what they're doing here. Um, additionally, this project will also con contribute to the completion of fine scale mapping for San Luis Obispo County, Monterey County, and San Benito County. So this will be adding over 5 million acres of new mapping and 1,700 new surveys for the state. And um, Tuckman Geospatial and CMPS will be completing the sampling and mapping for those areas. The Central Center for Conservation Biology at UC Riverside is completing the mapping of just over one million acres of the Colorado desert. AIS and CMPS and Ironwood Consulting are working together <laughs> to complete the mapping of nearly um, four, four and a half million acres that will fill in the gaps in the Mojave and Sonoran Desert. Um, and finally, we also have a new sampling project that's up um, in the Southern um, California mountains and valleys, and um, we'd please submit a, a proposal to complete that work if you can. So already over 50% of the state is fully mapped and classified and um, sampled, and it's taken nearly 25 years for us to get to this point, but as you can see, we're in hyperspeed right now. These new projects will add over 12,000 new surveys for the state and over 16 million acres of fine scale mapping. I'd like to just emphasize how much data this is to produce in just over four years of time. Those field surveys uh, um, will be added to our existing thousands of surveys for the state and help us um, refine our vegetation community definitions, but also they can be too much more with, can be done with those, not to mention the fine scale mapping. So together with all the projects, that are already complete and with everything in progress, we will have data collection for all eco regions of the state, though there's always refinement that can happen in those more nuanced community types. We have really good grasp on um, most of California's natural communities. Um, and then we will have fine scale mapping for every 68% of the state. And I'm super excited about all of this in part because I'm proud and beyond amazed by all the hardworking and dedicated folks collaborating to get this high quality work done so quickly, but I'm also excited to see what you all do with this data because this whole reason we're doing this work is to give you all and all the stewards of California landscape more tools and data to make more informed conservation and management decisions so we can better um, protect the biodiversity of California. So I'm really excited to see what you all do with this data. Um, we will, oops. Um, what needs to happen next, um, so the bulk of the data will be collected, the next phase would be to analyze all that data, and then the rest, 34% of the state will be ready for that final mapping state, phase. So I'm really excited to collaborate with folks that we aren't already collaborating with because um, collaboration is key and we couldn't be doing it without everybody's help. So thank you, and please do reach out. Oh, we have time for one question, amazingly. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle Stevens, and I wondered if you are considering adding in culturally significant plant species. I know at my ecocultural restoration project, things like Carex barbarae, Opossinum cannabinum, milkweeds, gray willow, all those plants don't naturally fill in the associations, and I'm not quite sure how to pull out the cultural plants, and I wondered if you'd thought about that. Yeah, I mean, we've been working with a lot of tribes through all of this, and so we're becoming obviously more aware of what, what's culturally significant, and uh, <clears throat> we uh, are working to 
kind of highlight those in the Manual of California Vegetation, as well as um, focus in on those. Um, I don't even know where you are, so I'm just kind of generally looking out. But OK, thanks. Um, uh, we are, I think we would, through all this work, in some instances, would be able to identify the community types that those species tend to, co to occur in. And I think that um, that's definitely on our minds. When you've had a major impact like a uh, like the Dixie fire, uh, how do you integrate that into your uh, databases? Well, it kind of depends on when the fire happens, right? About what process part of the process we're in. Um, for sampling, um, if the fire is a very recent fire, um, there might not be vegetation to survey, but we do want to survey um, early successional vegetation. Um, communities, so we, we do make an effort to do that. Um, for mapping, sometimes it'll burn mid-project, mid and we have to kind of um, triage and figure out how to deal with that in, in mid-mapping project. It's variable. depends on what we're, what, when, we, when we have fire. Thank you. Great. Thanks, <laughs> Teresa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel.